Well, we've got some big topics to cover this week. We missed a huge interview that came out over the time we were in Memphis at Freedom Fest, but we both have suffered through it and caught up. There is a over two hour interview that Tucker Carlson just linked with Andrew Tate. And guys, we've covered Andrew Tate on this show before. He is a mega influencer grifter. He is in the red pill men's rights kind of space. And he Alpha is just- male. The- I, I'm not giving him that. That guy, I could beat that guy arm wrestling. Self-described no alpha male. <laughs> yeah. And as is true with anybody who is a self-described alpha male, there's nothing alpha about this twerp. He is just a sniveling weirdo. But he's got an audience and he has been facing charges in Romania for almost, what, a year now? It's been a while that this has been ongoing. He's been under house arrest, I think, along with his brother. Um, we covered this a long time ago, guys. I can't remember the exact timeline. But anyways, all that to say... Tucker platformed him over the past week, and I am not one of these people that says you should platform people you disagree with or even people who have awful things to say. I think there is value at times in confronting people, in exposing them, in um, arguing and debating them, but that's not what Tucker did in this interview. I told you in watching it, I felt like I watched a two-hour blowjob session between Tucker Carlson and Andrew Tate. He was he was like a little fanboy. It was so weird to watch. He did nothing to push back on the many lies that Andrew Tate told throughout the course of his interview. He was laughing alongside him as they joked about things like sex trafficking and coercion. I mean, the whole thing was like, see, yeah. I feel like I needed to take a bath afterwards. It was a tough watch. Uh, I will say that Tucker has the ability to be a fantastic interviewer and a very yeah interviewer i mean just look at how he treated mike pence the other day it went viral him grilling mike pence over ukraine uh but he just decided to go fangirl and just let andrew tate say all sorts of things that aren't true so as you mentioned uh andrew tate is the is this mega influencer social media star tiktok youtube everything he's just one of the most famous people on the internet so even if you haven't heard of him your gen z or millennial kids or nephews or whatever absolutely have I think he's a very pernicious influence, uh, but he stands accused of sex trafficking and sexual assault in Romania, where he has chosen to live. Um, And he also has faced accusations in the past in the UK of sexual assault and physical violence, including ones that are corroborated by uh, contemporaneous text and even voice notes where he uh, admits to some of it, although not fully admitting to all the crimes. Um, But it's pretty damning stuff. Now, this case in Romania is obviously hard for us to evaluate. We don't speak Romanian. We don't know much about the Romanian uh, criminal justice system. However, the way that Tucker allowed Andrew to spin the case where he's accused of sex trafficking um, and of also of rape was disappointing because he didn't point out that this just simply wasn't true take a listen to this first extended clip how do you force someone to do tiktok videos i guess the prosecutor is gonna have to explain that isn't he uh it's a very interesting scenario i'm in and i'm inside of romania so i have to show a degree of respect to the romanian judicial system and i have to show a degree of respect to the situation i'm in but the overall charge is that there's an organized criminal group there's a group of us i'm the head of it my brother is the below me and we use the lover boy method to convince women to do TikTok videos to make money so that we can steal the TikTok money. So there's no, just to be clear, you are not accused of pandering, of pimping, of no. forcing women to have sex with anybody. No, not forcing them to have sex, not, for, not restraining their uh, movement, not stopping them from living a full life, but the fact that we are somehow convincing them to have TikTok. Very interesting. I- but, but force, what does that consist of? Forcing someone to do something. Are they accusing you of using violence or? No, they're accusing me. And this thing, they're accusing me of using the lover boy method, coercing them by being nice. So, Brad, I know we have some actual like data to get in here that is going to totally debunk this. And I, again, just think it's completely irresponsible of Tucker to have not done his job as a journalist if he's going to have an interview with this person, to have the facts at his disposal and to actually ask him meaningful, hard-hitting questions about what the allegations actually entail. One thing that makes me irate about this, though, immediately off the cuff, even before we get into the fact that I think it's full of lies, 
is how they're joking about the lover boy method, which is is nothing to joke about. The Actually, lover boy quite method serious. is it's not a real being, thing. Yeah, it's not being nice. It is coercing somebody and tricking them into thinking that you were in a loving, committed relationship with them, and then convincing them to start doing things for sexual gratification of you or others, sometimes for money involved, that they would not normally be doing, except they're trying to please you and stay in the context of this relationship. It is a sinister, disgusting technique what? to use. It is abusive, and the just the lightness with which that is discussed there is so off-putting and horrible, and I just, ugh, turns my stomach. Yeah, and Andrew Tate's actually on the record in the past admitting that he used in the past uh, the Loverboy method. Take a listen to this clip. I was all about trying to get paid. Like, my mm -hmm. whole, I used sex as a tool to make women love me so they'd obey me and live in my house and make me money. That, that's what I wanted. So I was a pimp in that sense. Like I was not trying to have sex with women. I was trying to get women to obey me. And I realized that's easier if they like to have sex with me. <laughs> if they don't like having sex with me, it's pretty hard to make them listen to me. So he's openly bragged about using the lover boy method. And now that was in reference to a webcam business he had years ago, those old clips. And the thing he's accused of now is a separate instance. So it's not literally the same thing. But it's not such a stretch to believe that he used this method when he's on the record so many times in the past talking about how he historically used that method. Right. And even in the interview with Tucker, Tucker says, so you're not a pimp. You're not. This is. Yes. Yes, you are. You are a pimp. You have been trying to convince women to submit to you and sleep with people and sleep with you, perhaps for money. I don't know who all they were sleeping with this scenario, but clearly he's on camera admitting that he was pimping women out for money. I don't understand. Like. The amount of people who literally will tell you this is a conspiracy theory, this is like the New World Order trying to come after him because he's so masculine, he's going to wake up all these other masculine men and then they can't control us because we'll all just be so masculine. Like, get the F out of here. It is so easy to find many, many instances of him making this exact same kind of comment on camera. He's a moron. And if you don't know that, I think you are too. It's not hard to find this. It's all over the internet him saying these kinds of things. Well, and I'll just say this, set the law aside for a moment. Is he guilty? Is he not guilty? Somebody who treats women like that, who manipulates them and exploits them, is not a role model for men and is certainly not a role model for conservatives who claim to stand for family values. Yeah, I don't, the same people who run around screaming groomer at anybody who's in the LGBT community, the same people who are constantly obsessing over human trafficking, that are obsessed with promiscuity, that are saying we should go back to these trad relationships, women should all be virgins, men need to be the protectors of their household, in the same breath, turn around and support this kind of creep online. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I think this movement has become completely unmoored from any actual values, any any substance, any principles whatsoever, and they are getting grifted upon hard, and they look like fools, because nobody takes you seriously. I don't Anybody who's claiming to be a conservative and stand for things like individual liberty could not support this kind of rhetoric. Anybody who says they're pro-life could not support somebody bragging about exploiting women on camera. Anybody who says they are a Christian should be condemning this unilaterally. And I'm actually madder at the conservatives who've fallen into his fan base than I am even him. Get your acts together. It's I also want to point out, uh, as a matter of journalistic integrity, he says, they're not even accusing me of violence. And Tucker goes, oh, really? He should know that that's actually not true. So just going to the indictment from Romania, and this is a Google translated version, so don't interpret it word for word, uh, but it says very specifically, through the indictment dated 1506-2023, which is in our uh, writing would be June 15th of 2023, uh, the, the government ordered that the four defendants be sent to court under house arrest, two people with dual citizenship, British in arrest, British and American, and two Romanian citizens for committing the crimes of constituting an organized criminal group, human, traffic, a, tr human trafficking in a continuous form, and continued rape, two material acts, as well as a variety of other charges and instigation to hit or other violence and hitting or other violence. Now, this also says that they were, it basically describes the lover boy method. However, it also says they were later transported and housed in buildings in Ilvav County where by exercising acts of physical violence and mental coercion, 
they were sexually exploited by group members. Look, let me say this. We don't know if that's true. It's an allegation in an indictment. But when Andrew Tate says that he's not even accused of violence, that's not true. That's a, that is factually incorrect. And that's something Tucker should have pointed out if he was even going to do a bare minimum due diligence uh, in this interview. And he simply didn't. It turned into a two hour love fest. And I am a huge believer that sunlight is the best disinfectant. I don't believe in no platforming people. However, when you're going to have such a popular figure with such a, a shady, shady past and things going on, you've got to call it out. You've got to have push and pull. You can't just roll over and give them an open mic for two and a half hours where you're nodding along about how amazing they are. I mean, what Tucker basically did was give him a much larger platform to reach an audience he wouldn't usually be in front of in order to lie and do damage control on his image. And to me, that is my big problem with Tucker, right? It's not that he interviewed him. That's fine. It's that he didn't do the basic bare minimum as a quote, quote, journalist. It's becoming really easy to see why Fox News wanted to disenfranchise from this person because he's kind of a live wire. Like this is really just it's not even following basic journalism ethics of how you approach interviews. And I can't understand the reasoning for that unless you are actually in this guy's fan base and you're trying to basically help uh, fix his image, try to, you know, sort over everything he's done wrong. And I felt like the entire time watching this, Tucker kind of came about this with this um, attitude that I think is pretty prevalent around the movement that Andrew Tate has built up around himself that like women are just lying about men, that powers that be lie about men, that when you see accusations against them, it's all made up, it's fabricated, men are just being abused by society. And like, this is why I've said for some time, the Tates and, and you know, everybody else sort of in their like manosphere, they have this real message of victimhood of like, you as a man are a victim, everybody's after you and you've been victimized by society and you've been victimized by women not wanting to sleep with you. And, and that is really what they have tapped it, into is this like pervasive sense amongst men in our society that they're victims. And I just find that really unattractive. I think we can have a conversation about there being some things that are stacked against men in our society, certainly when you get into like the custody system and the divorce system and things of that nature. I also think society-wise, men are not thriving. I've talked about that extensively with the loneliness epidemic, the lack of strong community ties around many men, the likelihood that they, um, they're more likely to commit suicide because they don't get as much mental health care. They die younger because they're not taking as good of care of themselves oftentimes. The list goes on. Those are things that are fair to talk about, but I think they should be talked about in a way that is empowering to men, that encourages them to pull themselves up by their bootstraps to actually embrace true masculinity, which is not this like victimhood, snowflake, whining on the internet mentality. And I, I feel like Tucker's just so much in that camp that he identifies with Andrew Tate. And it's sort of a like, anybody, you know, could come for me and accuse me too. And therefore, like, I'm with you because these are just wild allegations. No, these are credible allegations. We've said over and over he, like anybody else, deserves his day in court. We believe in due process. I believe in the rule of law. I don't believe in convicting people in the court of public opinion. But these are credible accusations. They are not fluffy. They are not made up. They are not without accusers. So I cannot stand the approach that Tucker took to this. And I think it's going to do a lot of damage in convincing conservatives out there, especially conservative men, that this is part of a larger overarching agenda to try to target men that he that Andrew Tate represents them, right? That this could now, happen. I can see you. why I can see why, you know, they'd look at something like the treatment of Brett Kavanaugh and they'd be mm -hmm. very legitimate concerns about due process and the yeah. weaponization of accusations. But that doesn't mean that sometimes they're not legitimate and sometimes they are credible. And I will say uh, on the due process element, you and I both believe in innocent until proven guilty. And Tate has some valid complaints about how, if we take his version of events at face value, he's been treated by the Romanian criminal justice system. Let's roll this clip. What are the penalties? They're extremely severe, five to 10 years in jail. And I've already served coming up now seven months in a form of jail. Um, they can only- So hold you, you are essentially incarcerated right now. Absolutely, I'm on house arrest. And that counts as jail. You can only be held six months without charge. I was initially picked up thrown in a cell without charge. And I think the intention of the entire investigation at that point was to find the crime because they had very, very weak evidence. They contacted 2000 people who know me or knew me. They tried very hard to convince some female somewhere to come forward and say something bad about me. The media machine, which works hands in hands with the justice machine, as you know very well, 
did exactly that. In fact, they offered bribes effectively. They'd call up ex-girlfriends and say, if you have anything bad to say about Andrew, we can pay you $50,000 for the story. And they tried very hard. They didn't find any evidence of anything. Uh, they then released me on house arrest. And then two days before the legal limit in which they had to drop everything, they charged me with whatever they had from the beginning, which is very little. And now we have to wait for the Romanian judicial system to analyze the file and God willing, throw it away. So, Hannah, with taking that at face value, obviously there's issues if he's held without charges. That's that's wrong. But let me play another clip for you where Andrew Tate describes why he chose to live in Romania, of all places. And I like living in countries where, one, there's some kind of moral fiber beyond the dollar. And two, I like living in countries where corruption is accessible for everybody. I find it offensive that a police officer in England will stop me for speeding and then refuse to take a bribe and pretend that, that no, 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 but I'll tell you why. Cause he'll sit there and go, no, this is the law, law and order and pretend that the law means something and, and fuck me over. But if you're a billionaire or if you're Boris Johnson, you can go to Epstein's Island. You can fucking throw parties during COVID. You can do whatever the fuck you want, right? So the whole, the whole idea of law and order is a lie. The whole idea of it's bullshit. It's just about if you're high enough, you can throw it all away. I'd rather be in a society where if I'm in Prague and they stop me for speeding and they say, bro, you were speeding. Oh, here's 50 bucks. All right, cool, cool. Bye, bye. If corruption exists, which it does, let us all play. Why do only they get to play and I don't get to play? So you live in England and they're going to come around and spout law and order at you all day long. But the elites, they ignore all law and order. It's yeah. always been bullshit. It's always been lies. So they're going to sit here and lock you in your house or force you to wear a mask while they get to do whatever the fuck they want. And I don't like being anyone's peon or anyone's sheep. So I like living in a society where my money and my influence and my power means I'm not below or beholden to any of these bull laws. So he basically said there that he chose Romania because he likes to live in a society that's corrupt where he's not beholden to the laws. And yet now here he is complaining about how unfair the justice system is in Romania. I guess I just don't have that much sympathy for him then. Yeah, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. I mean, I think it's not lost on me that this type likes to go live in places that are certainly not bastions of human rights, right? These are not places that are known for upholding the same standards of ethics that the West has. And the West certainly has many, many issues within our criminal justice system. To be quite frank, you could probably find a person in every state that's had the same kind of ordeal he's had with not being charged, being held without charges, being held without bail, on and on the list goes. Justice systems are corrupt. That's why they need to be extremely limited and, and have a lot of accountability and transparency. And I haven't really seen anybody get it right yet in the, in the modern world. But in the U.S., you do have some recourse. You know, if you are being mistreated by the criminal justice system, which you very well could be, you can at least hire attorneys. There are pro bono groups that would come to your defense. You have the media that you could use to expose them. There are still some tools you could use to try to push back. I doubt Romania has that kind of infrastructure, but he clearly wanted to live in a place that was corrupt and that didn't have a rule of law and where he was able to get away with more things. I mean, he has said this over and over on camera that he recognized he would be able to get away with more in Romania. And I think that that is a very um, damning look for him when it comes to these charges as a whole. So I don't really have a lot of sympathy for him. I also don't really trust him. So it's, you know, it's hard to say, like, is this what's happening in Romania? Is it not? Who knows? Um, but even if we give him the benefit of the great. doubt and it's true, it doesn't mean he's innocent and it's hypocritical because he chose it for the corruption. So, um, yeah. look, and I just, you know, with Tucker being there, it would be nice for him to do some actual journalism and look into that, talk to Romania officials, do some digging. I don't understand what the point of this interview was. I, what I would have done is play clips of Tucker, of, of Andrew Tate to Andrew Tate. So I would have said, oh, I'm sorry to hear about your experiences in the Romanian criminal justice system. Well, let's see if you've changed your view from this that you said. And then on my monitor, play that clip we showed you. Like, all right, which which was right? I mean, do you are you pro-corruption or anti-corruption? Or I would have said, so did you do the lover boy method? And he said, no, it's not real. That's just being nice. I would play the clips of him explicitly talking. And we only played a short one. There's minutes where he uses the specific term. Um, lover boy method that he's teaching men to do so he is clearly hypocritical he's he's contradicted himself too many times times to count but that wasn't pointed out and for a long time this guy was tolerated on the right or ignored while he was mega viral and famous just prominent trad influencers and commentators didn't call him out um, and now some have started to ben shapiro to his credit has actually been for some time pushing back on andrew tate uh, and now we have folks like 
Liz Wheeler, who is a very socially conservative commentator, tweeted, Andrew Tate is evil. He's an antichrist figure. He diagnoses a cultural ill accurately that our society vilifies men. Then for an antidote, he describe he prescribes poison. Materialism, pornography, the exploitation of women, the worship of self. Young men should reject him. Ali Beth Stuckley, a Stucky, a socially conservative Blaze TV host who I've gone back and forth with, I've debated. She says, disturbing how many in the OK Groomer, predators should get the death penalty, ban porn, the media si sides with sex traffickers crowd somehow seem to view Andrew Tate, a literal groomer, with such nuanced and complex respect. Uh, I want to give them both credit. This is both, in both cases, I think they're right. I don't share all their values or everything. So some of the statements here or there, maybe I don't fully agree with, but like, I'm glad they're speaking out and they've, they've got the gist here right. Uh, however, what's depressing is that in the replies under their tweets, you will just see mobs of men defending them. And so I, it's depressing. I don't know. I don't know how much more, but, but I feel like people on the right have an obligation to speak out against this man. Yet if you do, he says that you are just part of the matrix or the deep state to out to get him. Let's roll this clip from his response video to conservatives turning against him. Anybody who puts together any edit of any video that is older than 2021 doesn't understand has nothing at all to do with the criminal case. And anybody now on the right who's attacking me in perfect sync overnight with all these other accounts is simply a matrix agent which has been activated by the people in charge who understand that their primary weapon, the MSM, is no longer working. It's bouncing off of me because people love truth and they love honesty. Yeah, look, I'm not a part of any matrix. There's no conspiracy to take him out. I Nobody sent me the talking points. I just look at this guy who's a literal pornographer who has bragged about um, how he mistreats women, who is openly misogynistic, and then has these criminal charges against him that I don't know are true, but uh, certainly f are in character with the things he said in the past. And I just think this is not somebody who should be a model, a role model, or an influence on any young man, on conservative young men, on anybody with family values or just decent norms or respect. And so I'm glad people are speaking out against him. I know we'll get some hate for doing so, but I just think it's important. Yeah, I mean, his message is one of masochism and misogyny. You and I have been speaking out about it for a long time, long before most conservatives start speaking out. We have taken some heat for it, and we don't care. Because I think it is incumbent on anybody who is trying to advance things in society and politically to condemn this kind of rhetoric. I think Andrew Tate's audience and the, his message is akin to a hate group against women. I think women need to be really careful. And if you start dating a man, search through his likes on Twitter. Look and see if he's liking this kind of content. I mean, I'm dead ass serious. Like people need to avoid people who are in this kind of mentality. I think that he should be ostracized from society. I think that there needs to be tremendous pushback from both men and women. You know, I'd, I'd like to see more men rising up. I have seen a lot of conservative women speak out against this following the interview with Tucker Carlson. I am pleased to see that, but we need so much more. And I think that we need to find better role models to direct young men to and actually give them the tools they need to fix themselves and fix their lives. So I, I think everybody should do their job in advocating against this guy and anybody who's saying things like him.